What's fix and flipping? So I got this from, um, nowadays it's called Wikipedia. So uh, a term used primarily in the United States to describe purchasing a revenue generating asset and fixing it and quickly reselling it for a profit. Um, so how long does your typical, I'm gonna throw a t-shirt out for whoever can answer this question. How long is your typical reno? Eight weeks. Two months. Three months. Eight weeks. Six months. Six Six weeks. Weeks. Three Four months. Weeks. Four weeks. Two months. Three Four months. Four. Four. All right. Who said I typically do them about four to six, but who said six? Yeah, so it varies, but most of my deals have always been bread and butter. I mean, uh, we try to get in and out as quickly as possible. I wanted to break down this. It's OPM. Um, who knows what that means? Anyone? Go ahead, Nick. There you go. Sweet. So here's an example I'm going to break out for you guys. Um, this is the deal I just did. Well, I did it. I locked it up to, let's see, in November. So a realtor brought me this deal, and it was off market. And uh, he called me. He's like, uh, Flip, I just sold a property in this complex to Connie. And I'm like, cool. And he said, um, the seller has five more that he doesn't want to put on MLS. I said, okay, let's take a look. What, when do you want me there? So I ran over there that day, and um, I'm like, I, I wasn't sure why he didn't want them, but that's okay, right? Because you can't worry about, you just got to do your numbers and make sure it works sense, makes sense. So um, there was five of them I put in escrow in November. And we did a two-month close. And uh, they were 167 each, and I paid uh, 837 for the five of them. So large purchase, um, and I wasn't 100% sure where I was going to get all that money, right? Because that's a lot of money, 837,000 on a purchase. So I contacted some hard money lender friends, and uh, a couple of them were like, oh, we'll lend you. 450, 500, because some guys don't like to do condos either. So um, Chris said he would, he usually lends me 80%, but he lent a little less than 80, so he lent me 615. So I got 615 now, where am I gonna get the 222 plus closing costs? I was like, oh wow, that's a lot of cash I gotta put into the deal. So um, I went to what's called gap funding. Anyone know what gap funding is? Um, bridge. So uh, basically, um, I went to other investors who want to get a return on their money. So I paid them. Well, the first lender I paid 10%, and there's a lot of hard money lenders out there. If you don't have one, I can introduce you to some guys. But um, so I paid 10% on that money, the 615, and then I paid 12% uh, on the remaining. Um, well, I needed 355,000. So Almost for a million dollars in this transaction, guess how much money I put in? Zero. Zero. Is that, is that pretty sweet? Yeah. yeah. So, um, how did I do it? I had to devise a plan, like, I had to go to people and already have it, like, plug and play, right? So, hey, this is the back end, this is how much we're going to make, this is what we're going to do. So, we're going to talk in the workshop about how to do that. like. What is the first step that we do? Like, the first step, like the money's everywhere, right? So we can find money, but the properties are hard to find. But we're going to teach you on how to find property too in the workshop. Um, let's see. So, steps to buying your first fix and flip with none of your own money. I would find a mentor. Like, there's so many coaches right now out there. Um, like, when I first started, there weren't coaches that you could hire and pay. It was like, I went to title companies, I said, you know, do you know anyone flipping? No, I went to realtors, some realtors may, all realtors aren't the same, right? <laughs> so it's, it's definitely the mindset of an investment realtor that you guys want to find. Um, proof of funds, do you guys all have your proof of funds ready? How quickly should you have the proof of funds? Before you submit the offer. Exactly. <laughs> so that's important. Like, if you guys don't have hard money lenders, we do hard money. I got other guys that lend hard money to me that have large pools of money. Um, but I would suggest you have your proof of funds letter ready to roll because it's so darn competitive out there. 
know your par target price. I think I asked you this <coughs> earlier today, Kat. What's your target price? Yeah, between 120 and 300. 120 and 300. And guess what? Who's who's trying to get those properties? Everybody. Everybody. So we teach on how to successfully find those deals, um, and we're going to talk about that at the workshop. Um, because where do you find them? Um, off market. That's I mean, that's the best way to find deals. Is you guys know, and you know, there's some wholesalers in here. There's some guys that are um, doing a lot of mailers, doing a lot of social. And we talked about ARV. Not a lot of realtors, believe it or not, know how to run back end ARV. I'm not ripping on realtors, but there's a difference between a, a guy who does investment real estate and a guy who <coughs> is a traditional seller, right? I did maybe 12 deals the last two months and none of those were on the market. And Flip, if somebody, if somebody found their neighbor, you know, called them and said, hey, buy my home, under market value, whatever, I just want to unload it. They didn't have the money available, they're a little sketchy on the deal. They could call you, right? And say, look, I think I have a great deal, but I'm not, you know if I'm fully committed, I don't have the financing, you could potentially partner up with them, right? 100%, yeah, and so. that, that's beautiful because you guys have the uh, inner connections with that person, right? So it's not like getting a property from the MLS where you're competing, like I just had one in Scottsdale that I'm gonna show you guys. There was 20 offers the first day on this Scottsdale property, but the realtor knew me, so I got the deal. And it's all about relationships. Can I just ask some questions to you? Maybe just to add a little bit more, because I want to make sure everyone feels like they got some nuggets of some specifics. I know we talked a lot about generalities. It's a big picture, sure. right? This is so, big picture, yeah. but can I maybe be the guy to ask some things that maybe some of the people here yeah. are wanting to ask, but, but, don't, but don't know to ask? So off market deals, we talked a lot about that, you know, that's where the deals are. They're off market. You guys aren't gonna go to the MLS or get your realtor friend to find you. I mean they're on there, but you're not typically gonna be looking at the MLS for things that are at market value, so you can go and buy it as an investment property. So off market deals, can you talk a tiny bit about what types of off market deals they might be looking at? Um, and how they find that information? A lot of it Sure, I sure a lot of it I can help you guys with as well. So that's been a great source for me over the years, Jason, is people that are realtors who have properties that they're about to list, and they say, hey, Flip, we got this house in Scottsdale, and it needs a lot of work. We're gonna, yeah, it needs a ton of work, but if uh, you wanna come take a look at it, and I just did one in Tempe like that, where Michael from North & Co. Um, said, you know, it's a d disaster, and, uh, you want to look at it before I list it, and it's great for him because guess what? He gets what? What do they call that? Double dip mm -hmm. commission. So, pretty easy slam dunk for him. Where real you network with realtors and you know let them know what you're looking for. It's a very good point. Having been a realtor myself, a very good point. Make sure you have a rolodex of your realtors. If they have a client, your realtors have a client with a nightmare house, maybe a hoarding situation. It's got a lot of issues. Instead of that client saying, you know what, I don't have the time to fix this up and I don't know how to do it, and you know, we'll list later. Boom. You could, if you have a relationship with that realtor, you know, they can let you know, hey, pick up this off market thing and you can fix it up. With this. So, um, anything else, maybe pre foreclosure type of, type of uh, houses? Talk a minute or two about that. Sure. I mean, uh, so we work uh, with an app and we have door knockers that go out and they focus on homes that are in pre-foreclosure and uh, so you know we're pretty straight up we train the guys to go out and knock on the door and no it's not we just we're in the neighborhood we're here because we know you're in pre-foreclosure we're here to help and you know we so the first thing is develop rapport with them but um, so we do a lot of door knocking uh, so that's another avenue to find. Also, let's see, you mentioned obviously sheep first, ask questions later as far as you find a good property, lock it up. Um, so remember the that. The hard part I think is what is a good property, right? right? So we... I know on that, that. on that note, you mentioned running comps, very, very important obviously, and a lot of people aren't well versed on how to do that. Is there any, is there maybe one or two little tidbits of information you can give to them? You can go further in depth at the intensive, sure. but yeah. what are some of the basics? How would the average person who has never really done much before, how would they figure out if that little house with 
the, the roof that's half torn off and it's in pre foreclosure if it's a good we, deal. we do we talk a lot about building your team so like I have like four or five different businesses but guess what I'm probably the I'm not very smart so I got smarter people working with me so they're all helping like they do their certain skill so that's the first thing we talk about if you want to flip let's build a team let's find the investment realtor let's find the trades people and like with all the Canadians I shared all the trades people that I've used over the years and you know it makes life a lot easier when you ha you're not calling out of the new times or the um, Phoenix, Arizona Republic and stuff like that. So. And, that's, and that's a good point. I think maybe the, one of the final points you should make is net, networking is key. It's key. It's key. And guys, don't overlook the value. Anybody who's kind of new to the game here, don't overlook the value of just being in this room. With, you saw all those people that raised their hand, they're wholesaling. Get their information. This guy right here, I know we talked about basics. Get his information. If you find a potential deal, like he said, he might even partner with you on it. You might not even have to come out of pocket. I don't know. I don't mean to speak for sure. you, but, yeah. but networking is 90% of it. When I I did six, six or seven um, flips last year, five flips and one buy and hold last year, and for the first two or three, um, all I did is find the property. I, I found the property and I kind of did some basic cursory like. Well, I know the area and it's kind of going for this much and I looked at the roof and I eyeballed it, but I called a couple friends that were realtors and a couple other friends that had done, um, you know, a lot of flips and I just said, hey, please help me out with this, please. Is this a good deal? And when the general consensus was, hell yeah, it's a good deal, then I bought it. And, you know, it's just networking, networking. So before we end, I wanted to see if there's any questions on the uh, presentation as far as you know, can you guys actually do a deal without any of your own money? So I want you to feel like confident. So the reason I'm confident is because I know I can have the money, right? So if you know you have money, it just makes you 100% more confident when you're chasing deals. Um, go ahead. So um, obviously a couple of years ago, all you had to do was paint, put some new carpet in, maybe some granite countertops, and you got a great profit. I hear that's not how you do it nowadays. It's value add. Right. So how are you actually maximizing profits in today's market, considering that I hear you have to add square footage, which involves permitting. It's not just paint and carpet. So how are you maximizing your flips in today's market and the way it's trending? You know, I've always done bread and butter. There's some guys that will add um, extra square footage, but I'm fine if I make 30, 40 a flip. Um, and, you know, to me, I'd rather keep moving on property then hit you know 140 i mean so the bigger the risk the more reward right but the longer the project's going to take you like i'm in them four to six weeks and i'm done um you're more than welcome to come out to the scottsdale one we demoed everything it's like a brand new house but we're not adding square footage so we bought that at 360 and we'll sell it for 500 so we'll make you know decent good money we'll put 55 into it um, so that's a good hit. So everyone has a niche, right? So there may be a guy in here that builds from ground up. There may be a guy that adds square footage. There may just be a bread and butter, and that's what I'm comfortable with. Uh, anyone else on the money side of it? Any questions? All right.